today's headlines, magnitude 7.3 earthquake strikes off Davao Oriental. Officials proclaiming the country out of recession. Executives urge new normal for VAX. Gas explosion causes fire in Bonifacio Global City. Kusi rallies PDP Laban to help in fight versus COVID-19. Department of Energy sees tight power supply in 2022. Senators, leave Ayuda to local government units. Creamline escapes Cherry Tigo in thrilling finals opener. Catalina Rodriguez, pregnancy humbled me. Good morning, I am Venice Bautista and you are watching Tribune News on Q. Today is August 12, 2021 and here are the latest news of this Thursday morning. Earthquake struck off waters northeast of Mati Dava Oriental at 1.46 a.m. on Thursday, Pivolts reported. The quake was of tectonic origin with a depth focus of 69 kilometers. Pivolts reported intensities in the following areas. Intensity 5, General Santos City. Intensity 4, Coronadal City, Tampacan, South Cotabato. And with instrumental intensities, Intensity 4, General Santos City, South Cotabato, Kiamba, Sarangani, and for Intensity 3, San Francisco, Southern Leyte, Abuyog Leyte, Kidapawan City, Cotabato, Kinunganan, Southern Leyte. And for Intensity 2, St. Bernard, Southern Leyte, Dulag Leyte, and Surigao City, Surigao del Norte, Palo Leyte. For Intensity 1, Alang Alang, Karigara Leyte. Damage to infrastructure and aftershocks are expected according to Pivolts. No tsunami alert was reported. What the nation can find comfort in is that the economy will be able to bounce back quicker than most nations because of the fundamental reforms that had strengthened the fiscal state. An 11.8% growth during a quarter is indeed a cause of celebration. Officials are now proclaiming that the country is already out of recession but whooping it up may be premature. Experts are taking a different viewpoint from economic managers that the economy had a robust performance in the second quarter and the conclusion that the long recession is over. Based on the quarterly figures, the economy actually shrank compared to the first three months, which economists are attributing to the raising COVID cases that had revived the fear factor in the business community. The anxiety became real with the recent imposition of the two-week strict quarantine rules to contain the more vicious Delta strain of the coronavirus disease. While the pace of vaccination is picking up, with an estimated 20% of the population having received one or two jabs, the more contagious mutation of the microscopic beast emerged the results to a grim race for people's lives. When the economy spiraled to a 17% contraction in the same quarter a year ago, the worry among economists was that it was too deep and might take years to emerge from. The second quarter figure indicated the underlying strength of the economy despite the extraordinary restraint from the virus crisis. The high numbers, experts pointed out, were more the result of the deep crevice that the economy fell into last year as a consequence on the on and off quarantine impositions. Keeping the economic momentum thus will not allow any room for error here on end, which can only be handled by experienced hands. Major trade groups want government to draft a program that will provide vaccinated Filipinos a near normal environment that, in turn, is expected to jumpstart recovery for businesses. Former Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry Chairperson and International Chamber of Commerce Governors Board Member Jesus Varela lamented the group's call has fallen on deaf ears of the interagency task force with the management of emerging infectious diseases. According to Varela, IATF is stubborn. They are so focused on data and their integrity. He said further relaxing restrictions on the vaccinated is a practical move to put people at ease in terms of health and security. He would have wanted a niche market only for fully vaccinated so they will feel more comfortable and safe. Meanwhile, MAP National Issues Committee Chairperson Lisa Mantaring 
said that there may be a possibility when more people are vaccinated, similar to what other countries are doing. He also said that maybe health authorities should intensify the info campaign to show that all vaccines have high efficacy in preventing serious illnesses and death. Presidential Advisor for Entrepreneurship Joey Concepcion, for his part, explained that the move to favor inoculated people will not mean discrimination but is more of a move to kill the virus. On the other hand, businessman and information and communications undersecretary Ramon Jacinto, owner of radio station DZRJ and the Raha Broadcasting Network, said employers should have the option to fire their employees who stubbornly rejects being vaccinated since they are a threat to the health of the entire workforce. Jacinto, in collaboration with Daily Tribune, launched a campaign to encourage vaccination with the use of a song, Papa Bakuna Kaba, which a jingle mobile of the Tribune propagates in densely populated areas. Tribune News on Q will be back right after these reminders. This public service advisory is brought to you by Daily Tribune and 100.3 RJFM. Oh, vaccination, isolation, gotta keep up with my nutrition, gotta maintain my body condition, then I can take my vaccination. What do I choose? What do I take? As long as it is not a fake. AstraZeneca, Moderna, BioNTech, even Sinovac, okay now. Vaccination for the nation, no more isolation with vaccination. Public Service Advisory is brought to you by Daily Tribune and 100.3 RJFM. Fiber is the free and secure way to connect with friends and family anywhere. Send messages and make phone and video calls for free. Download Viber now. back on Tribune News on Q. In other news, fire broke out at a construction site in BGC, Taguig City, this evening following a gas explosion, authorities said. The explosion occurred at the site along 21st Drive at the corner lot beside the Bonifacio Prime building and the ensuing fire reached first alarm at 7.30 p.m., the Bureau of Fire Protection said. Fire trucks were seen around the area while flames and the thick smoke were engulfing the site. The blaze appears to have been put out past 8 p.m. Meanwhile, PDP Laban President and Secretary of the Department of Energy, Alfonso Cusi, on Wednesday rallied members of the administration party to help in the country's fight against the resurgent threat of the COVID-19 pandemic. He said that although they are in the midst of our preparations for the 2022 electoral contest, they should not lose sight of the more pressing and urgent fight, which is the battle against COVID-19. Early this week, the government placed the national capital region under enhanced community quarantine in a bid to drive down the spike in the number of cases of COVID-19 infections attributed to the highly contagious Delta variant of the virus. But even with the most stringent health protocols in place, the Department of Health has admitted that active COVID-19 cases in the national capital region are projected to multiply by thousands and could even reach 18,000 by the end of September. He stressed that PDP Laban should be in the forefront of the fight against COVID-19 as the pandemic's heavy toll has eroded the gains the country has achieved under the administration of President Duterte, who is the party chairman. 
In 2016, Kusi took on the challenge to support Duterte Party and help reorganize what has been a party of a few with practically empty war chests and transformed it into the form formidable political force in the country today. Meanwhile, in his role as Energy Secretary, Kusi reiterated his call to all industry players from generation, distribution, utilities, and transmission services to ensure the country of a stable and adequate supply of electricity. A stable power supply is crucial to guarantee the efficacy of vaccines. At the same time, it is an important component to jumpstart the economy. The Department of Energy is seeing tight power supply next year that could affect the polling period, but measures are already in place to mitigate the situation. In an economic forum on Wednesday, Energy Undersecretary Felix William Pitabella said that for 2022, they see the thinning of supply on Election Day and thereafter, that is why they are closely monitoring the situation. They are coming up with more policies so that they can ensure that they have more supply. Based on the latest power forecast of the DOE, there would be a decline in power reserves in the first week of January 2022 due to the planned outages during the week. The DOE has been coordinating with the distribution utilities and power plant operators to guarantee uninterrupted power supply in the days leading up to, during, and in the immediate aftermath of the elections. Meanwhile, the Malampaya Natural Gas Field, which provides up to 30% of the power generation needs of Luzon, will go offline in October for a 20-day scheduled maintenance of from activity. Apart from years of tight supply, the Malampaya downtime has also seen hiking up power rates. In 2017, the Manila Electronic Company, or Miralco, reported that the cost impact of the activity to its customers reached as much as 1.752 billion pesos. Miralco has requested to extend its interim power supply agreement with Masinlok Power Planters Corporation Limited, was not granted by the Department of Energy, which, want, which wanted the purchases to undergo a competitive selection process. The emergency procurement would allow Meralco to augment the supply in its franchise area to ensure power will continue running. This was also help uh, generate a sufficient power supply for the polling period next year. Turbine News on Q will be back. Stay with us. This public service advisory is brought to you by Daily Tribune and 100.3 RJFM. Oh, vaccination, isolation, gotta keep up with my nutrition, gotta maintain my body condition, then I can take my vaccination. What do I choose? What do I take? As long as it is not a fake. AstraZeneca, Moderna, BioNTech, even Sinovac, okay now. Vaccination for the nation, no more isolation with vaccination. Public Service Advisory is brought to you by Daily Tribune and 100.3 RJFM. are still watching Tribune News on Q. Senator Risa Ontiveros on Wednesday blasted the national government for politicizing the distribution of cash aid to low-income families amid the reimposition of enhanced community quarantine 
in the capital region due to the threat of the Delta variant of COVID-19 in the country. The senator said LGUs have been saving the pandemic response of this country. Governors, mayors, and barangay leaders have long proved that despite the weight of their duties, shortage of financial assistance, limited vaccine allocations, and their alleged lack of experience, they, they still keep going. She added that the administration should stop its illusion that its politicking is helping. During a taped television address on Monday night, the chief executive said he will strip a city in, Mayor, Metro, in Metro Manila of the power to distribute the government's financial assistance to its constituents due to the disorganization of its mayor. Duterte did not name the local official but claimed that he had seen photos of him wearing a bikini on Facebook. Mayor Francisco Isco Moreno de Magoso is the lone leader in Metro Manila to have half-naked photos online stemming from his early years as an actor. Ontiveros, however, came in defense of the unnamed official as she stressed that Filipinos need help from the government and not gossip. With that, Ontiveros said our LGU are the redeeming factor in this fight, especially against the new variants of COVID-19. Despite the ongoing ruckus between the two leaders, Moreno announced on Tuesday night that the distribution of cash aid in Manila will continue. In our sports news, Creamline survived a grueling five-set encounter over a determined Cherry Tigo side. 25-15, 25-21, 18-25, 19-25, and 15-7 in Game 1 of the Premier Volleyball League Open Conference Finals at the PCV Social Civic and Cultural Center in Bacara, Ilocos Norte on Wednesday evening. The Cool Smashers took control of the one-hour delayed opening match of the Best of Three series as they took advantage of the wary crossovers who came off a deciding Game 3 semifinals win against Choco Mucho the night before. The crossovers come back to its toll on their players as the Cool Smashers, op cool, cool Smashers opened the fifth set with fresher legs to race to an early 6-1 lead. The crossovers never got their game going in the fifth set and were disorganized as Galanza set home an ace for a 10-4 advantage. The two teams will face each other for Game 2 today after the presentation of individual awards. For our showbiz news, Catarina Rodriguez said that pregnancy humbled her upon learning she was expecting her first child with businessman Nino Barbers. The 29-year-old Miss Intercontinental 2017 first runner-up and Asia's Next Top Model Season 2 finalist made the announcement via a 10-minute YouTube vlog. Katarina said in an exclusive interview with, with Mega that once they confirmed her pregnancy, everything came naturally to her. Rodriguez, who also competed in the Miss, Miss World 2018, said that she went from feeling like she knew people and how the world works to seeing how little she actually knew about life. Her body wasn't the only thing that changed, her mind and heart did too. She feels grateful for all the growth happening, for the baby in her womb, and for her personal journey as well. And that wraps up the story this morning. Before we go, we would like to thank the SM Store, the Department of Tourism, Arneta Center, AMG Motors, Hina Motors, Security Bank, and Overseas Community Affairs Council member Alan Lin of Republic of China for their continued support. Again, this is Venice Bautista, and you are watching Tribune News on Q. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay at home. Good morning. This public service advisory is brought to you by Daily Tribune and 100.3 RJFM. Oh, vaccination, isolation, gotta keep up with my nutrition, gotta maintain my body condition, then I can take my vaccination. What do I choose? What do I take? As long as it is not a fake. AstraZeneca, Moderna, BioNTech, even Sinovac, okay now. Vaccination for the nation, no more isolation. With vaccination. Public Service Advisory is brought to you by Daily Tribune 
And what else? Catch the latest news on our website, tribune.net.ph, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, Tribune Now. The Daily Tribune is one with the nation in facing the COVID-19 crisis, and in line with this, the Daily Tribune Digital Edition and Press Reader is now available for free online. You can also download the Daily Tribune app on Apple Store for iOS users and Google Play for Android users to get the latest and most comprehensive news online. Daily Tribune is also inviting everyone to join its community Viper Katribu to get updates on the freshest and hottest news and entertainment stories of the day. Tarsito emoticons are also available on our community Viber. Just click on the link in this video to join.